This is the Earth Speak Podcast, and I'm your hostess, Natalie Ross. My guest today is Naomi Love, and we're talking about how to give yourself an intuition tune-up, because sometimes you just need to recalibrate your inner awareness to know what's your intuition versus what's fear or resistance. All the truth you have within. I guess we can, let's do a little introduction before we get on the road, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. So thank you for being here, Naomi. Thank you. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I am Naomi Love. I'm so excited to be with you. We are in San Francisco, Island Girl meets City Life. <laughs> and today we're driving <laughs> out of the city to go explore Stinson Beach. Here we go. After an hour of preparing <laughs> in this car. A little car prep. <laughs> Thank God we did all that, though. I know. Pretty rad. And thank God for backups of backups and backups. Oh, um, backups. That's the way and to go. And I checked my car because I left the window oh rolled God. down. <laughs> I was loving when I was reading or listening to uh, one of the videos that was c- popping up on the Insta stories about our inner navigational system. And uh, one of the, th- when you're saying like to slow down and to listen, there's oftentimes this reorientation that I'm seeing that many of us need in order to be able to interpret what we hear. And sometimes if our compass is off and it's not sort of aligned with true north, like true nature, we mm-hmm. could call that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> T-N. <laughs> true nature. And then it's like we might hear things but it's not it's not actually oriented there was a story of a girl who once got lost in nature Mm -hmm. and she one of the things that I kept hearing her say when I listened to all the social media stuff on her was my intuition kept telling me to go this direction and it kept guiding her to being lost and so I'm just using that as a metaphor of like sometimes we think something's our intuition but it's not. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't use the word ego from anybody else's standpoint of what any technical term for ego is. It's just what I've seen in my practice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll use the word like in that way. And so um, I'm glad we have a GoPro. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so if you're listening, dear listener, and you're just on a recording, we're driving through the city right now, and there's crazy construction, so that's what you're hearing in the background. Yeah, here so, we go. Yeah, keep going. So um, so I'm using it as a metaphor. When sometimes the ego is so smart, you know, it's like this divine, um, it's definitely a smart entity. And we need to be able to interpret what is like the ego and the ego can be so wise that it speaks the same language as the intuition. And sometimes it'll even feel the same. Well, I want to say your intuition does sound the same. Your same, yeah, it can like yeah. use the same words. Yes. Yeah. Same okay, words, keep going. Same texture, same. Mm-hmm. And what I see in my work is like the ego becomes a sheath. And it works with the mental sheath and the mental sheath, they create like this residual kind of energy on the body that keeps us caught in the cycle of separation. Hmm. And so, and then I'll see it in, in somebody when they come for a session, for example, they'll be like, everything's fine. And I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. Okay. (laughs) My bullshitometer is definitely going off, not in like a judgy way, but just like, uh uh, I don't really know. You're here to like hold space. Exactly. And I do call bullshit. Let's just be real. Um, I do. (laughs) Some people don't like me. That's okay. (laughs) And so, um, so then, and I do want to say that I do it from a very loving place of just like, you know, I'd want to know if I'm bullshitting myself. Right. That's how you feel. Otherwise. That's where the know. good stuff, that's where the like golden nuggets of joy are hiding beneath that stuff. Exactly. So it's not calling you out judging. It's yes. like calling exactly. you forward to be integrated. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'll see that. And then when a person gets on the table and my hands touch their body, their body is telling me a totally different story. Awesome. 
Yes. And it's so interesting to see the story of the body and the story of the mind are often very much in total separation and disconnection mm. from one another. We're so good at that. We're so good at that. And so that's where we have to learn how to reorient to our inner navigational system. And I do find that we over our, we, our mind, we, our ego that work together, we override ourselves all the time. We as uh, what we've learned from society, for me, I think we talked about this like Google Maps Mm -hmm. because I've been traveling so many times Mm -hmm. in places I don't know. I'm Mm -hmm. super dependent on the Google Map. Mm -hmm. And when I got to Ashland this year, I was like, I don't understand how I used to get around (laughs) because I... I like drove up to Mount Shasta and I was like, where's the health food store? And I was Googling it. And then I was like, what the fuck are you doing? You're Googling. There's like four streets. <laughs> like, yeah. Can't you just like close your eyes and listen? And did you used to be able to just navigate yeah, based on I kind of sensing so. which yeah. way? Cause I mean, I lived in a bus, like traveled around the U mm-hmm. S cool. like, it's mm-hmm. not like we had a map and on the map it says here's where the health food store is right mm-hmm. but we probably maybe asked around mm-hmm. right right and communicated with other mm-hmm. human beings mm-hmm. where now we're also or just explored yeah mm-hmm. exactly so yeah i loved when um when i heard that the words like your inner compass and I hear inner navigational system and how to really listen to what the intuition is. And sometimes we need that space held for us by somebody who can be a neutral witness to help us clear yeah. sort of what we may be um, overly connected to as our intuition. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. there can be that like even... It's right? like a recalibration. Recalibration. Yeah. It's exactly. like your machine just gets off like in science. I would go in and have to every single time, every single time I start the day and reuse my machines, I have to calibrate them. There's like, you just can't, you know, and that's what you have to do with your intuition too. We really do. And we have to cultivate practices that support the connection with it. So um, I've been doing this wandering practice for the last six months and a little bit before that, but more deeply while I've been on this teaching tour, Um, where I'm just, I have no agenda. I don't know where I'm going and I just head out the door or out of the car, wherever I am, or pull over when I'm called and just start to listen to find what my yes is. Mm. Because it's something that we override all the time. Like, oh, I'm hungry, but I don't feel like cooking. Mm -hmm. Right there, that's an override of your body saying, yo, yo. feed me yeah and like how many times on a day-to-day basis like you're thirsty but you don't drink water or you have to pee and i'm using really simple things but we we do it on like a really big scale all Mm -hmm. the time and so i've been playing with what are the yeses while i'm in this wandering Mm -hmm. and seeing what uh without an it's basically wandering without an agenda And that has been the biggest practice out of everything I've done that has helped me to reconnect to that inner navigational system to truly be able to listen to what my intuition is because it's through feeling for me. It's like a felt sense. And I've noticed the last couple weeks I haven't had as much nature time and I'm in a place where I need to kind of figure out what I'm doing next or like sit with in it and I, yeah, in life. Right. And I got all like, bo, 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 lo, go, la, la, la. and I was like, Oh boy. Is that your weird yes, that you that's the weird <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, okay, you're not, this isn't, you've got to go get in nature. You've got to re- you gotta recalibrate because mm-hmm. you're not listening to your intuition. You're totally stuck in your mind and you're trying to logically, you know, cause I have this fantasy that there's like this great strategy. And once I tap into the strategy of, living life in a certain kind of way, then all of my decisions will be like perfect. And uh, you'll will never make efficient. a mistake. Yeah. You'll never have any challenges. Like, me on. And so <laughs> do you Virgo in your chart? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go back around the block. I've already gone that direction. <laughs> then <laughs> this, forward. this will not do. <laughs> <laughs> it's so oh. And that's another thing, like a quirk. Mm -hmm. But as I've gotten older, it has become something I sort of attach to where that can't be possible when you're wandering because when you're wandering, none of it makes sense. Yeah. 
So there is no efficiency. That's the point. No efficiency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I'm in that state, I'm like, oh, now I'm, you know, in the self-awareness of, okay, I don't make a decision. You know, they were like, if I want to go back to Maui, I'd have to ship my car on Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Wow. And I was like, I can't. That's, uh, 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 you know, and wow. that's when we start to emotionally blackmail ourselves too. Like, well, like what? Uh, for instance, like, okay, well, if I want to go to Maui, I have to ship my car now because I'd want to get my car when I got there. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't want to have to run a car when I'm there. So I have to decide now because of this and then because of that and because of this, like, the Oh, you get like this whole chain reaction. Yes, keeps mm -hmm. us, like, yeah. from not having just a, a possibility, mm -hmm. potentiality. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, I know that one. Right? Oh, really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and th there's something in that too where it's like how I feel, how we feel inside of ourselves is, yes, interdependent with our environment and like what we're surrounded by. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Mm -hmm. You know, the difference between going in nature, going to the Apple Genius Bar. I mean, right. Mm -hmm. Or going in a subway car. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. So. Yeah, how to, con and so connecting to the intuition, we need to be able to have practices that we commit to that mm -hmm. keep us listening. Calibrated and listening. Yeah. So what are your practices? So uh, the wandering one is my favorite. What, tell, break it so down for us. if you want to wander. If you want, here's you how to wander. Is this, this the most efficient way to wander? <laughs> <laughs> to wander. Um, step by step, seven steps to seven wandering. steps to wandering. Let's count your intuition will be spot on forever, <laughs> and you will have great sex for the rest of your life. Yeah, you won't always. believe it. <laughs> you won't believe how amazing the sex will be. Seven steps to wandering. It actually did lead me to having great sex. I bet because it's like good, great sex is like wandering, yes, in it, your pleasure. There was no agenda. Mm. Right, which is yes. the most important with having great sex, oh. is we don't want an agenda. Mm -hmm. Oh, good catch. Thank you. So, um, step one, let's say you're going to do it safely. So we're not just being safe you wandering. Know, Use silly. protection. Use protection. <laughs> Wear goggles. <laughs> have water bring water you know, i think water bring don't backup go water to the forest i mean i i do actually recommend wandering in the forest but you have to do it in a way that you're safe so mm -hmm. that's all y'all's responsibility mm -hmm. to be safe right but it's being able to just listen instead of like which way should i go it's like you just close your eyes and you lean into the back of your body with your breath and your awareness and then you allow your body to just guide you. How does it feel for you? It feels viscerally soft and mm. pleasant. Like, what, not, how do you know which way to go in your body? It does it on its own mm -hmm. because yes, doesn't have any question around it. It just feels like it just open. Like does it? Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. Um, for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna articulate for me. Yes. I feel, because I practice this too, yes. and this is how I've, I navigate, like I'm using Google Maps right now, but I will often navigate just based on this, because it's in connection with spirit. You're like literally connected to spirits and connected to the earth, and they're guiding you and speaking to you through your body. Yeah. This is my yeah. awareness of it. It could be something totally different, so take it or leave it. But I feel like an inner magnet. Like I will just feel like magnetized to the right, or like, I, it's weird to explain, it but, but it's like the right side of my body will feel that way when you have two magnets together. It's you, I, so it's, or I'll feel it to the straight, you know, it's a weird feeling. Yeah, it is. But it's it feels very, good. It feels, feels good. Yeah. It's pleasant. It's, mm -hmm. And I do it also driving. So this is kind of maybe an easier example. Mm -hmm. um, I was shipping my car from Maui and I realized that I had forgotten that you can only have a quarter tank of gas. And you put oh, it on the yeah. ship mm -hmm. and I was like, oh yep. shit. And it was later at night mm -hmm. and I was like, I can't like siphon the gas <laughs> out. Like, what am I going to do? Like go <laughs> cut someone's hose, <laughs> you know, seal a hose, siphon cut it gas. and suck on some gas. Gross. Like, that's definitely not Please be don't do that. Because everyone's like, why didn't you siphon it out? I was like, yeah, you tell me. <laughs> why didn't I siphon it out? <laughs> like, 
this and is like, uh, have you seen me try to do stuff like oh my I would end up God. sipping on gasoline you'd be in the hospital yeah yeah so I was like I'm just gonna go drive but I live on a small island so it's not like <laughs> just I can drive just, around the yeah. island so I was like where what am I gonna do so I just got in the car and I let my hands just guide Mm -hmm. which direction I was going. Mm -hmm. I had nowhere to go. I had didn't have cool. to be anywhere. So when we're driving, we can do the wandering, like the way that I would drive to work. Like I know how I'm going to get there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to turn left. And, it, and rather than having some agenda with how I was going to get there, mm -hmm. it's just letting your, your hands guide you which way feels good in that moment. And what does feel good feel like? Rather than going on autopilot, yes. you're like, mm-hmm. And uh, I, it's not... I, w I like that you mentioned on your way to work because that means someone can meander even yes. if they don't have a whole day off to meander. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You can just do a little listening, like which way's the, instead of like, which way's the best way or, you know, Google Maps, like, look, this right. is the most efficient. Right. That's great. But mm -hmm. even as I've been driving across the country, it's... You know, everyone's like, oh, this is the quickest way. And I'm like, that's not necessarily what I'm going for. Right. Do you want the quickest, the quickest way, way or do you want the most pleasurable yeah. way? Like which way adventure? feels good in that moment rather than the over anticipation. Because what I notice in the bodies of the people that I work with a lot is there's this like leaning forward mm. of like, what are we going to do? What's tomorrow? What's the next thing? Wow. What are you going to do? Always you looking for the always next. Always looking. And I've got, I can't function. That, that guy's way. going for the that next. That guy's going. Seriously, <laughs> that's hilarious. That was an amazing timing. The energy. We have you on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Driving is such a good example. Yes. I love actually being in the car because it teaches us so much about who, how, where we are. Mm. I guess is what I want to say. The moment I get in the car, I know what my mood is. Mm. Because if I'm like, oh, fuck you, get out of the way. I'm like, oh, my nervous system <laughs> is like, ex I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. I'm stressed and I'm irritable. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I get in the car and I'm chill and cruising, I'm like, all right, good. I'm like, I'm feeling rested. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling overstressed. Mm -hmm. I've been doing good hygiene, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So those are all uh, tells for me when I need to recalibrate. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Even how I handled getting a ticket towed, my car towed <laughs> in San Francisco. I was like, well, that happened. <laughs> you know? And I was like, well, uh, cool. <laughs> that's, there's nothing you can do about it. Right. Surrender. got to just, you know, mm -hmm. just at that point, be upset. But mm -hmm. That would be silly. Mm hmm. So, um, yeah, that would be, those are the few practices that I would recommend. The other one is, but I like, you know, I want to keep kind of talking, diving into yes, the meandering because I think really ex more examples and breaking it down. I think people get it on one hand, they're like, yeah, meandering, like just go out. But I don't want to underestimate how much of a grip your mind and your need for efficiency and purpose and knowing has on you and so just even and like the like you said earlier you're kind of creating excuses for why you can't do the thing or like if i do this then i need to do that the, like i want people to catch themselves saying right now i want them to think about and notice in them their own bodies and minds right now like what is their resistance to wandering or reason why they can't yes right like everyone's carrying a reason like i can't because i work so much and i have kids and because i have bills to pay because if i meander then my life's gonna fall to shit like yes. where do you go when you have that resistance yeah um and what do you say to people about kind of softening that or working through it or whatever i don't know what your approach is yeah that's a great question resistance shows up in so many ways to keep <laughs> us caught in the cycles that we're in and a way to keep us small Ugh. and it often sets obstacles and every at every turn mm -hmm. and uh my biggest thing to do in that is to be able to take a deep breath because our breath is our greatest helping spirit. Mm. It is with us to the moment that we are born, oh. to the moment we die. 
It is always there and it is always telling us where we truly are. And so oftentimes, like if we can actually connect to the breath and see, or if we realize that our, our, uh, that we're holding our breath, that's information. Yeah. It's letting us know, Hey, I'm actually freaking out and stressed out right now. <laughs> <Tunnel down. laughs> and so that's the first thing is check in with your breath. Where are you breathing? Because when we're in flow, it's where the energy goes. And flow doesn't mean like everything is easy or anything. Flow just means there isn't all of these edges of our own internal experience that's creating more blocks all over the place. Mm. Like all the reasons why not. Yeah. And all the like mm -hmm. things pop and it, like things might even pop up in your life to poke at your resistance like maybe your car broke down or like I heard just yesterday someone talking about how they're they're going on a big thing that was gonna be very transformational and their plane caught on fire and there were major delays like but she persevered and uh -huh. just like what shows up in your life to make give you kind of an easy excuse out oh all the time <laughs> I hear it all the time because I teach through apprenticeship and it requires quite a big commitment uh-huh and or classes or sessions oh I can't make this session because I can't do this because, wow. and oh my kid, and I at this point know what's real and what is bullshit, you know, like you can feel it. What's what the inner the resistance, resistance? Yeah. what's actually like an emergency or a thing that needs to be attended to? Yeah. And once you're able to understand the quality of the sensation that resistance brings up in the body, because mm -hmm. you know, one thing that I'm seeing is after you know how, I mean, for me, it's fascinating because I didn't ever think I would have this, I would get to this place in my career or whatever, but you know how like people have bodies of work yeah. and yeah. Know, it's like, oh, Carl Jung saw this many clients and mm -hmm. created this system or noticed these patterns, Wright, you know, sees these patterns. I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. God, I, I'm there. Wow. I, look at Golden Gate. We're on the Golden Gate Bridge. It's so beautiful. It's a sunny day. Hello, Earth Spirits. Hello. Wow, the water. Mm. So good. Mm hmm So when I, when, what I see is that the body doesn't lie. Mm. And you have a body of work. And yes. what's your body of work pointing to? What patterns does it hold? Wow. It's different for every person. <laughs> Tell me everything. <laughs> different for every person. Mm. But it's usually uh, very much like a mood ring. And if we could attune. But you were talking bodies. about like Carl Jung and a body of work though. Yes. Like what were you saying that about you having that? Like, so yes, I, my body of, I just see the patterns. I okay. can see the patterns of it, but it's different for each individual. Oh, okay. Okay. Each okay. I see. pattern is mm -hmm. like manifesting mm -hmm. differently. Like I don't see like everyone who has this has the same. But thing. you have kind of attuned into recognizing oh that's a pattern even yes. if every pattern's different yes. it's like like and you can now, say oh that's a color but every yes. color is different there's a collective thread that many of us are holding that are very Ooh. similar yeah and it's usually about shame mm. not enoughness mm. love mm. fear of vulnerability mm. intimacy not feeling like we belong and people have resistance to those words yeah. Make up your own versions because they're just what I see. It's like just I'm like oh, this is just what I see. We resist Constantly. love because we, we believe we're not worthy on some like deep level. So much. It's dangerous and, and scary. All sorts of obstacles to not allow ourselves to receive love, and the mind and the ego creating you know working in cahoots in a way to create separation. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're wrong or bad. What I see a lot is that we are the overriding of ourselves and even as a collective within the holistic healing arts fields that we're overriding the subtleties. So for example, working with Yoni eggs, because I've worked with like thousands of clients, I see the damage of what's been done Ooh. from some of the things that people do. Like what? And so like for yoni eggs, people are like, I'm going to get a yoni egg and I want to have sex and I want to have a, an orgasm. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And what's often missed is that we're not connecting to just presencing with the yoni without doing anything. Mm -hmm. 
like we need to kind of stop doing stuff and just feel and just allow ourselves to be like what's here because here's noticing and interacting without the agenda as you were saying earlier Mm -hmm. and so all the things that i'm that i that have like they're all metaphors for everything else wandering wandering in our bodies wandering in life wandering in nature even with our relationships like stepping out of the agenda oh that's where i like to be i'm like it's hard to have an agenda but i have to i kind of had to work to get here to this point i didn't i was born this way but i had to peel off a lot of layers to bring it tell me more about that oh wow uh, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot. Well, I mean, it points right, exactly right, directly what you're talking about around shame and fear and worthiness and love. And those are the layers that I peeled back were the places where I was not worthy of, or this wasn't possible. Like in my inner mind, it would be like my subconscious. And then my kind of self-talk dialogue would be like, this isn't possible for you or you don't have the energy for that or if you do this then this means this and this and this and you don't want that and like just peeling back those layers and learning I mean the art of healing is real like you really have to learn how to heal yourself so yeah. that I mean that's the most terrifying and most amazing road you can take I think I don't know I mean I don't have kids so I don't know that road but I imagine that that's exactly intertwined with all what we're talking about too but with the volume turned up like 10,000 yeah 10 million so often you know our generation had parents or my generation had parents who had many of them who had an agenda for their children and our parents parents had an agenda for their children and so there's something quite magical when we can step away from the agenda even in the body of work that I teach when the students um, are learning how to touch and we look at not having an agenda in massage therapy you know there's an agenda it's not to say that there's something wrong with agenda it's just saying we have to be in right relationship with it it's not to be we don't need to be an agenda all the time well what about from agenda to intention yeah and intention is agenda is like kind of a stiff framework versus intention is here's where we're aiming our arrow but our energy might take us somewhere else exactly and then I want to take it back to motivation okay because intention oftentimes with the way that the mind works is a way to not take responsibility so let's say I said something (laughs) super hurtful to you okay and then I was like oh it wasn't my intention oh Mm -hmm. yeah but what was your motivation in saying what you said Mm. Where did it come from inside? Mm -hmm. Because we can feel people's motivation. Mm -hmm. And when we call it out, when we're like, hey, that hurt my feelings or I felt this way, Mm -hmm. we often don't want to take responsibility for where it originated inside Mm. of us. So if I was like, I I can't even think because I don't think that way, but if I said something hurtful. Are you saying like, if I said something hurtful, if you said something hurtful, I'm just thinking from my perspective because I know how this feels because I've done it. Yes. And I can tell, like, I can feel the sharp energy in me. Yes. And it's like a arrow or a stabbing harshness. And oftentimes it's not even that I want to hurt the other person. It's I'm protecting something in myself that I think needs to be protected yes. when in reality absolutely is already okay and safe. Yes. Beautiful. So. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's being able to come to that motivation of like, oh, I was feeling uh, afraid of vulnerability. And so right. I said that. And it's so... What right. I'm seeing is like, we're, we're like missing those under the current, what's actually present. Mm-hmm. See if I can find the word, the like subcurrent of what's underneath. And so if I right. say that's not my intention, but then I'm still not speaking to what was actually present for me. And it's like, you know, I felt really hurt and I mm. feel vulnerable and I feel like I need to protect it you know, mm-hmm. and I don't feel safe with you or whatever. That can be an opportunity. That right it's there, having that awareness and willingness to be vulnerable in yourself and with each other is an opportunity to take that hurtful situation and make your bond deeper. Yeah. That's what I think. That's my exactly. experience at least. And the yeah. times when I haven't been or my person I'm engaged with that hasn't been willing to, t- they just take it too personally and blow it up. That's when it's turned into a deeper wound, like salt on the wound, like exactly. ripping it apart. 
And then it can turn into the like weird, manipulative, yeah. creepy town. Right, really scary. To, really scary. Where it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I had a couple of instances where I was like, this is getting like somebody's response was pretty weird and manipulative, you know? Mm. And I was like, Wah. yeah. Like I felt it. Mm -hmm. And then when I just said, you know, no thanks, like mm -hmm. thanks, but no thanks, it was mm -hmm. like, oh, did I offend you? And you're like, eh, like, no, I just, no, I just don't, don't want to interact with you right now. And so it's, <laughs> and, and I feel like if we could start being more honest mm -hmm. with ourselves, mm -hmm. then we can be more honest with each other. Mm. And then we take all that weird subterfuge out. Ugh. And we're not like, it's not like if you're mad at me, you should just fucking please just tell me mm -hmm. because I don't want to have to wonder. Well, you know, I can see why people like, I mean, I've, this is obviously from my own lived experience. Yes, so totally. I'm speaking from me as always, take it or leave it, anyone listening. Um, but I, I know why it's so scary and why it often doesn't end well or hasn't in the past because we weren't taught how to deal with this in conflict. We're taught to take things personally and taught to take things meaning like that this is attacking our, uh, our inner core being of worthiness or like, uh, we're not taught conflict resolution. We're not taught no these skills and these are literally these are skills you need to learn and practice just like riding a bike just like how to draw or how to walk or how to write like these are skills yeah and anyone who finds himself in the pattern of this kind of cycles repeating themselves in these ways it, it, it's just go get some conflict resolution skills like that's gonna be a huge game changer yeah learning how to speak the language of what's uh it's actually like the foundation of what we teach in the school is relating because wow wow it's kind of like Tell the us school more. for yeah. humanity i'm like yeah. i don't know what the name for what we're teaching it is but it's definitely like we have to learn how to get in touch with ourselves mm. we need to start to learn how starts to with the self Mm -hmm. listen to the body to mm -hmm. understand that it it does actually give us so much information that we're overriding mm -hmm. with the mind like uh -huh. all the time uh-huh and i too so i'm not like <laughs> i'm not like what's that um exempt yes thank you uh -huh. i was like tax exempt tax oh, exempt okay. i'm not tax exempt <laughs> <laughs> i am exempt i am not exempt from it and so the more that we start learning how to listen to ourselves, the yeah. more that we can start like interpreting that and then giving ourselves that or speaking what that is, because we've been taught and collectively we're, we're overriding ourselves and each other. Mm -hmm. Like if you say, here's something to eat and I'm like, no, thank you. I'm good. And then you're like, no, eat it. Mm. I'm like, but I don't want to, you're get, you're basically trying to give me a gift that I don't want. So mm -hmm. why would you want me? Turns into a you poison. Know, it turns into these like weird, we have these, you know, sort of, they're just disoriented because we were never taught how to, you know, we come to planet earth, however we come, I mean, you know, whether you're a star seed or aliens, whatever right, you're all human. the theories are. <laughs> but like we come to earth and we don't have a handbook. We don't understand right. how to, what it is to be here. We don't really understand this plane of existence. We break it down through science. There's different spiritual theories and philosophies, but we really don't know. Mm -hmm. And so we, and we're sort of trained in a way from our society. Right. Conditioning. I mean, that's conditioning. societal conditioning. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ooh, an open house. You want to go buy a house, yes, darling? Let's go buy a house. <laughs> yes, in the, sponsors. In the North Bay. <laughs> sponsors, yes. I would love a house. So we just need great. 2.4 million. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so once we start learning the language of like, this is what I'm noticing rather than, and, and giving this ourselves is what like I'm like noticing. A mm -hmm. permission. Rather than attaching stories yes. to it, noticing is a big word, yes. big, big, big word. Yes, yes, yes. So noticing takes us out of judgment. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes when we have like, let's say, quote unquote, good things to say or good feelings. I noticed this in the class I taught the other day in Berkeley. When I asked people what they were noticing, they're like, ooh, all these happy ones, you know, mm -hmm. like light. Mm -hmm. presence and you know sounds mm -hmm. lovely feather like and you're like cool. which is like yeah i want to be that mm -hmm. and then i was like does anyone have a crappy experience that you know like a less a less you know acceptable mm -hmm. and one woman was like pain 
Another one was like anger. And I was like, yes, that's, that's where we're going. And those are still judgments. Mm. They're not the actual sensation. Cool. Tell us more about that discernment between the sensation and the judgment. So when we have a feeling and it's an emotion that arises, Mm -hmm. we typically judge it Mm -hmm. as I'm angry. But what does Mm -hmm. anger feel like? I know. How do you describe it? It's like, it's like describing tasting food without yes. saying it's good. Like Exactly. <laughs> it's like, what is the sensation? There's a creamy interior and it's got yes. a nice finish with a hit of acid. Yes, like, it's good. There's a creamy, I notice like if there's some, all this wild fennel everywhere. Hello, wild fennel. I know we're now in the hills. It's beautiful. Of, we're heading up towards Mount Tamalpais. I don't know how you say it. Mount Tam is what I say. But, Mount yeah. Tam works. We're actually going to drive by Mere Woods in just a sec. But tell me more about um, naming, like for you, how do you describe the so flavor of your anger? Flavor of anger would be, <laughs> I feel a contraction in my abdomen. Ooh, I like that. And very body oriented. Very it's like, I feel oriented. it in my body and it feels this way. Yes, instead of it being from the mind, mm-hmm. because it's great to be in your mind. Sure, I'm not, there's no, in my, in this body of work, like the wise womb way, there's no wrong way. Mm-hmm. It's rather just a way of living. It's just the way, mm-hmm. whatever your way is. So there's no wrong way. And it's to say, let's listen without judgment. And so then I would come into, I notice an upward rising of warmth. Oh. My heart has a sensation of fluttering. Mm. I notice there is a contraction in my right shoulder. I notice the desire to come out of my body Mm. from the front side. Mm. So sadness, I notice I feel heavy. And so if we get out of the narrative that's often attached to I'm angry, I'm in pain, I'm sad, I'm anxious, we get out of the judgmental narrative because it usually comes with like a story attached to it. And I'm not one of those who says, you you know, fuck the story because the story has its place as well. And this is kind of the first place that we start is how to orient ourselves to listening to the body without judgment without saying this is right or wrong, or this is what I'm feeling, rather, this is what I'm noticing. And when we get into the noticing, it actually takes us out of, so I had a client and she was like, I have anxiety. And I was like, okay, so we did the noticing practice. And I was like, what does it feel like for you? And she was like, it's actually like bubbles in my chest. And, and I feel this upward, like burst of energy kind of coming up towards my my crown of my head and I actually feel like this need to smile and I was like so is that anxiety (laughs) and she was like it's actually excitement oh and I was like oh my god so could you imagine like the story of I have anxiety or I'm anxious versus I am excited Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. so it can change so much so let's do it with pain Like a lot of us will experience pain. It's like, oh, my right shoulder hurts. Mm -hmm. What does the hurt feel like? Can you describe it as like dull or sharp? Is it moving? Is it stagnant? Mm -hmm. If it had a certain shape, what would the shape be? If it had a color, what color would it be? How big is it? Does it radiate or is it static? Is it electrical? Right, so we start to like get to name the sensation. And so I'll say that like my knees hurt after teaching Mm -hmm. and I've sat for like eight hours (laughs) and they they do feel pretty wonky town. And so when I stand up, you know, I can barely walk for a second. So instead of saying my knees hurt, it's like if if you go into the sensation Mm -hmm. and we call it like a Shakti meditation or a noticing practice, Mm -hmm. my knees actually feel like this effervescence bubbles that are constantly moving through them. Weird. And so that's actually not pain. Mm. Pain. Does it change the experience for yes. you then from pain to just yes. neutral? Because pain is a limitation. Anger, 
creates a limitation. Mm. It creates something that's static rather than something that can pulsate. Tell me more about how anger is such a limited experience versus like what limits it? Why I'm is it angry limited? Is a judgment. Okay. Of a sensation that we're experiencing in the body. It feels very, when I, when I hear that, I, I just like see this kind of like energy projection, like a spear forward. Yes. It's just like this, I'm angry and it just like spears forward. It might be different from, for you or other people, but yeah. just when you're saying it and I'm hearing it and seeing it. It's like, and so if we come into, I'm experiencing and, or I'm noticing. So the more that we speak to the sensation that we're experiencing, the less limitation there is. So I'm experiencing an upward energy that feels maybe even, um, let's see if I can come up with the right, right word, like frantic would actually also be a judgment. judgment. So yeah. we're used to having judgmental language with it's ourselves. built right in, that's it's amazing. right freaking in. Wow. And so when it's like, it feels, Flickering? What would frantic feel? Yeah. Like there's a flickering of like the light or fire. I mm -hmm. can see it. And some of us are visual. So then what happens when we start coming into the noticing of the experience, we're allowing the body to then move the energy. Where if I say mm -hmm. I'm angry, mm -hmm. it's saying how I am mm -hmm. without the potentiality of anything being different. Mm. Also, saying don't be angry is also just silly. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's not don't be like that literally never works. No, don't be angry or calm silly. down and you're yeah. like, it makes you like, more angry. There's a lot of judgment and the hit. So something that we said earlier is like about the healing arts realms is, is, um, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Don't be angry. It's almost like we have to reorient ourselves as healers and practitioners also to how we communicate with our clients. And mm -hmm. we also need to reorient as a collective around what healing looks like, because Ooh. I think we think it looks this certain way. Mm -hmm. And we're also like afraid of it in a certain kind of way also and it's like ooh, I hear it a lot with my work because the womb is sort of the foundation of the body of work that I've created or that has come through me it's, it's like the cauldron yeah and <laughs> people are a little afraid of that cauldron and they're like what the because we've been conditioned to for literally yes. thousands of years exactly yeah exactly and I'm like it's actually super fun people are afraid of healing like we are. We're afraid of healing. Oh, we're afraid really of happy. what we're going to see when we go in and explore. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is, is that in the work that I teach, it's, it teaches a system of going in and exploring and being able to meet what it is that you see without judgment and with pre the more that we can meet it with presence, because really my love's mm -hmm. everything needs witnessing to be acknowledged, to be seen. Right, is it one of the be, greatest know. desires to be seen and belong. Exactly, and so if we can do that with each of the pieces that come up, or when we do that with each of the pieces that come up in our own body, whether it's the pain, the pain needs something. Mm -hmm. What does it need? Mm -hmm. Even if it's, let's just say- It's first. like a portal into the need. Yes. Instead of something to be overcome or conquered yes. or make go away or yes. resist. It's a doorway. It's a doorway into There's information. Possibility. Yes, exactly. So how can we start to orient ourselves to listening to our intuition, mm -hmm. which means that we're connecting more to our body mm -hmm. and we're re uh, we're not overriding our systematic needs. Mm -hmm. And we actually have this amazing tool as spirit in body mm -hmm. that helps us gauge where we are and what's present for us because we don't have the full capacity to know all the time right what's going on it's like us. a it's like a switchboard operator it's like you know if we don't our minds are not able to we're like seven bits of information and there's like billions around us at exactly. any moment yeah yeah so we really do need the more that we have this ability to to listen and to just notice like oh i'm overriding myself and maybe we still make that choice mm -hmm. it's fine right. mm -hmm. we're in presence and in acknowledgement though mm -hmm. rather than like 
ignoring Mm -hmm. or then being like, oh, I should be doing this Mm. because the should creates all of this guilt Mm -hmm. and creates all of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So the more that we can also presence with what we're noticing in our bodies, I'm thirsty, drink water. Mm -hmm. What do I need? I need water. Mm -hmm. Because we're not really allowed to have needs, some of us who wow. have lived yeah. in this world. Mm-hmm. We weren't allowed that as children or, you know, the codependency tendencies um, tend to overly look out and give to everyone else and forget and sacrifice their own needs mm-hmm. for everyone else's benefit. Mm-hmm. And so we do need to reorient to be able to not... It's not to, you don't have to sacrifice yourself for others. It's, and it's actually kind of unnecessary. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. It's unnecessary. And then, you know, what everyone's in this co- codependent enmeshment. Yes, we are. It's funny. It's so deep. It really is. Can you smell the laurel? It's, is that what that is? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, Isn't that amazing? amazing? Is there Freaking, wild bay up here? That's it. That's the laurel. Mm-hmm. There's wild bay. Yeah. Bay magic. Oh, I gave awesome. you some of the bay that I, I still have it. Yeah. Laurel is one of my spirit allies. And I even ha- they even have it in my apartment complex. They have it planted. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's just my little gem. It helps me write. I'm like, I need to write this like email. I'm like, I need help or this intro. And it's like, I got you. And I'm like, wow. so portal we were saying the needs portal in that pain is the portal in. And the more that we can be in presence with what it is that's arising, the more that we can reorient ourselves. Cause even in a, st- when a client comes and um, I had a woman who had said something like, you know, I have this guy and we're, you know, kind of, been on and off again for a long while and I really want a kid but he's not really the guy but then da, 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 and then um so I'm really opening and wanting to call in another guy and I was like well, I'm so confused um all of this has to do with things that are like that are not you <laughs> what's you? And, and that happens all the time in sessions people are like they come with all this stuff about everybody else Mm -hmm. and we're so Mm -hmm. not connecting to ourselves. And again, this isn't judgment. This is all information Mm -hmm. to collective patterns, Mm -hmm. you know, and we all are a part of the collective patterns and where are we playing into them Mm -hmm. and continually kind of, right. Right. We're not controlled by some exterior control. The control has infiltrated into us in the conditioning and it's up to us to recognize and rewire the conditioning and that changes the external reality that we live in and it's slow. I mean, the collective can move quickly, but it's, it's also like, I don't know, it's weird. I don't know. We must, we don't have to, we don't have to go down that tangent, but just wanted to It is so true. Yeah. There's just a whole reorientation that the more that I'm you know, the coolest thing about seeing like thousands and thousands of clients, like it's so trippy. And I see a lot of them. I see, like this year, just in the last few months, I saw like 90 clients in like 30 days. It's a lot of, and they're like two to three hour sessions. Good thing you're a manifesting generator. I know, the thing I have I'm more reflector. I'd be like two sessions in a month. I'd be like, that's enough. I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, we're good. <laughs> It's like, I'm just, I like it because I also get to just dive into the temple and like be in the right. energy. And it is and a like, different, yeah. It's different, you know. You're like channeling. It's, also it's flowing. Sometimes exhausting. Right. As a, the human part. Like right. when I come out of it and I'm right. like, oh fuck. <laughs> need <laughs> need that rest. All over now. Yeah. Um, so I do have to be careful in that. But because I'm on teaching tour, it's a different thing. Like, I don't want to live my life seeing that many clients. I've, I have done that. And yeah. I lost my marbles. So, whoops. Yeah. Um, but in that, if we could reorient how it is that we are seeing so many of the things through this distorted, these distorted lenses, it would change so many things. Like when somebody comes in and they're like, I only feel spiritual when I do these things. 
Yeah. You know, it's like... But it's based on an activity. Yes, it's based mm-hmm. on something external. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I can always feel everybody, and I can see their shadows, and I'm like, yeah, but... And... And then, like, fuck people, or, you know, whatever the things are that we do, mm-hmm. it's like, well, we really don't want to... When we're orienting ourselves around what spirituality is right now we're like disoriented we don't know what it is we think it's something we do what do okay tell me to like like we think it's going to a moon circle yes. or we think it's wearing beautiful really cute clothes right having singing bowls and drums right doing reiki penduluming <laughs> right we think it's these activities that yes. have a, a spiritual connotation yes and granted, I love all those things. Right, 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 so, right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, give me the Reiki I singing balls and balls the beautiful robes. And, yeah, mm-hmm. like, I love it all. Yeah. True. Mm-hmm. Spiritual materialism. Mm-hmm. I, I use my tools a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's more about the practices that you do that cultivate the energy within you. Mm-hmm. That then support the consistent resourcing of your spirit so that when we're in shit situations, mm-hmm. how we are in shit situations or in the Apple store mm-hmm. or in the Whole Foods parking <laughs> or the lot subway. or in the subway <laughs> or, you know, wherever. Mm-hmm. It's show or with your you family. Do. It's show <laughs> with the family. The golden, oh, God yes. darn it. Mm-hmm. Or, um, the cauldron of alchemy. Exactly. Of the cauldron of transformation. So uh, it's showing us us. And mm-hmm. where we are at. Mm-hmm. I actually like to get fucking dirty and dig the shitter trash. Right. That's where know? the gold is. Like, that's the compost. And I came at this all from, well, I think it was Born's Way. But in my adult life, came at it from soil science. And the art of composting is what took me there. And it's literally turning shit into the most nutrient-rich material that feeds new life. And that's spirituality. It's like, yep. find your shit. Actually, you don't need to go searching for it. Like, True. someone once said to me something like, I, sh- I don't need to be dredging stuff up I'm like we're not this is the stuff that's already here yes. that you just weren't acknowledging before and now you're going to and that's where you're going to compost it yep. you don't need to go looking for your shit if you're willing to see it's right under your nose it's right every there. single day right there. <laughs> and there's the ocean. the ocean god this gorgeous wow what a gorgeous day we got too oh, so grateful wow Wow. Beautiful. Wow. So much. This is awesome. I don't do the it should all be pretty thing. Mm -hmm, Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, Like we love beauty. I love I I love like bring it. Like bring beauty, mm -hmm, please. mm -hmm. And uh I'm also like this life is not what I've learned from this plane of existence is that there isn't anything all the time always. Right. So that's mm -hmm. you know, with beauty comes with up comes with light comes you know yeah. the selfish reason why i like working with clients and mm-hmm. watching tv uh-huh. like netflix okay um is that i actually see each expression of a character on a show uh-huh. as a potentiality of my expression of humanity cool and so kind of like an archetype yes okay and so every single character for whatever the shows are i can see the potentiality within me mm-hmm. and i can do healing with it Interesting. So, like, if you see someone on a show, tell like break it down for Even us. Even like a f- let's like a murderer. Okay. Where mm-hmm. is my mm-hmm. version of that? Mm-hmm. Within? Because mm-hmm. we all have the. What if we all had everything? Mm-hmm. What if we were all all of it? Mm-hmm. And instead of denying it, because that's often what we do is deny stuff. But whatever. Mm-hmm. That's not deny, me. I could never do right? that. Right. Mm-hmm. I could never have that because it's not just the bad stuff. It's the amazing stuff yes. too. Like. That could never happen for me. And, like, I don't want to be like my mom. And then guess who you're like? Your mom. Because you spent your whole life not wanting to be Uh like your mom. And so whatever we deny takes up a whole lot of energy. Even just, like, put your hand out. Like, I deny that. It takes a lot of energy to hold that. Yeah. So then what if we just embraced it all? Mm -hmm. Like, where's the part of me that could see myself? Like, I've I've seen red before. I've been attacked a Mm -hmm. few times physically. Wow. And I've had to protect myself. Mm -hmm. And so... 
could I see that potentiality? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Instead of denying it, be like, no, right. that person's bad mm -hmm. and I'm great. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, where's and my fuck that version too? Mm -hmm. Like, where, where is it within me? Mm -hmm. And the more that I do that, and the more that I see also that we are all often a reflection of the potentiality of the expression of humanity. Mm -hmm. So then there's no separation. There's no, you're better and I'm worse. Mm -hmm. It's just, we just are. And what's and getting expressed that. is always changing in the moment. Yes. So anything you want to say to wrap up kind of what we've been talking about in this segment? That was pretty epic, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this rich conversation. You can find Naomi Love online at naomilove.org and on Instagram at Wise Womb Lifestyles. Our ambient background music is Emily Sprague. And the singing parts are from Scarlet Crow. And the song is called It's Easier. It's an amazing song, amazing band. Check them out, Scarlet Crow. They're on Spotify. Coming soon, I have for you an interview with a honeysuckle vine and an interview with a grapevine. Yes, we're going to start getting to the part of Earth Speak that is speaking with the Earth, I promise. So hit subscribe and don't miss a thing. Also, share this episode and tag us at earthspeak and we'll check it out and maybe we'll even repost and say thank you i love hearing how much you appreciate the show and how it's helped you and helped shift your awareness and bring you new insights and clarity so please let us know we love hearing from you i also want to know are you ever finding yourself trying to bring your dreams to life in alignment with your intuition but finding that sometimes it's hard to tell what's your intuition versus what's fear do you ever get this close to your goals or desires only to thwart your progress with self-sabotage? Well, you're not alone. And trust me, you need to learn Inner Alchemy, a new online course to help you move past fears and blocks holding you back, to clearly tell what's your intuition versus fear, and to better navigate through challenges along your path with confidence and ease. This changes everything, and I'm really excited to bring this course with you. And Naomi Love will be teaching it. I'll be assisting. It's online. You can check it out. If you're a member of the collective, it's already part of your membership. But if you're not a member, you can still join us. So check it out, earthspeak.love. Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate you. All the roads are winding.